instantaneously we discuss instantaneous speed and uh, we have a very general observation very common observation that a coconut is falling a coconut is falling uh, with the increasing speed say you think of a coconut this falls down with a steadily increasing speed steadily increasing speed it means that for every second the speed increases at the rate 9.8 meter per second so at the zero times zero for second 9.8 second second 19.6 meter per second etc etc so for every second there is an increase of 9.8 meter per second approximately approximately we take it as a 10 meter per second square that is called acceleration due to gravity to study this we represent it as a particle o uh, at o at the initial position and the particle comes down and uh, at t time the particle comes to the position x this is called displacement at time t plus delta t uh, the position is x plus delta x x plus delta x i take this position as p this position as q remember the particle moves with the steadily increasing speed at t time the position is uh, p and t plus delta t position is q uh, with the displacements x plus delta x you know the uh, equation for uh, freely falling and we know that x is equal to uh, half gt square is the expression for a uh, position in terms of time so we measure the displacement downward positive so uh, i write this as a kt square where uh, where i take a uh, half g uh, that is equal to 5 meter per second square as a constant uh, as a constant uh, constant k so this is the position time function for the particle after a time after a small interval of time x plus delta x will be the uh, position with the time delta t square so we have a uh, a plus b the whole square expansion we use this as a t square plus a uh, 2t delta t plus delta t square clearing the brackets we have k t square plus 2k t delta t plus k delta t square Okay, k and uh, kt square and x will cancel, so we get delta x is equal to a two k t delta t plus k delta t square. So we find the average speed. We take the average speed for the small interval pq, which is delta x by delta t is equal to two k t plus k delta t. Now we are going to calculate this quantity. As delta t tends to zero, when you make delta t smaller and smaller, the point q displaces to p. As delta t becomes incredibly small, the smaller than the smallest quantity as we can perceive. In such a situation, the point q coincides with p. Then the interval will be very small, and we get the speed of the particle at the instant t. So we get speed at a point by making delta t tending to zero. And this is written as limit, limit as delta t tends to zero, delta x by delta t is equal to here. There is no uh, delta t in the first two, so I write delta k t itself plus limit. Uh, I write lt, lt, limit uh, k delta t as delta t tends to zero. In this case, uh, see, delta t is very small. Suppose I take delta t as 0 0.00001, then the old delta k t becomes 0 0.0005. So this quantity is very small as compared to the first one. Suppose t is equal to 1, the uh, first term will be 10, and the other one will be very small. So I neglect this quantity, and uh, I take this as a 2 k t, 2 k t. And this is written as dx by dt which is called the instantaneous speed or speed of the particle at the moment at the instant t or speed of the particle at p itself this is the case dx by dt is equal to 2kt so if the position time part particle if the position time function is given by x is equal to uh, half gt square or if you half k uh, simply kt square in that case dx by dt is equal to 2kt now let's see uh, another uh, function uh, x is equal to x is equal to kt cube kt cube in this case x plus delta x is equal to k into t plus delta t the all cube and this becomes k into 
uh, this is a plus b the whole cube form so t cube plus 3t square delta t plus 3t uh, delta t square plus delta t cube uh, clearing the brackets we get kt cube plus 3kt square delta t uh, plus 3kt delta t square plus k delta t cube then x and kt cube will cancel and we get a delta x is equal to 3kt delta 3kt square delta t plus 3kt delta t square plus k delta t cube now we find the average speed again we find the average speed average speed delta x by delta t uh, is equal to 3kt squared plus 3kt delta t plus a k delta t square again we take the limit instantaneous speed as the limit delta x by delta t as delta t tends to zero the first term is free from delta t and as we did in the last case here as delta t tends to zero the second term becomes zero true for the last term so the answer is this one so this is the instantaneous speed dx by dt uh, is equal to 3k t square 3k t square now we look for another uh, example x is equal to kt x is equal to kt in this case x plus delta x is equal to k into uh, t plus delta t or uh, this is kt plus k delta t uh, x and kt will cancel so delta x is equal to k delta t delta x by delta t is equal to k so limit uh, as delta t tends to zero delta x by delta t is equal to k itself this is dx by dt is equal to k now this is obvious uh, position time situation is like this this is the position of the particle uh, this i take uh, uh, t time along x axis and uh, position x along y axis and the graph is like this so position increases steadily with the time in that case a uh, case the uh, you uh, constant velocity constant velocity then i consider other situation suppose a particle is uh, uh, fixed particle is fixed at this position x is equal to k particle is fixed at position x is equal to k that means the particle is at rest in this case uh, x is equal to k x is equal to k x plus delta x is equal to k itself k and delta x cancel so k and x cancel so we get delta x is equal to zero uh, delta x by delta t is equal to zero limit as delta t tends to zero uh, this quantity delta x by delta t is equal to zero this is nothing but instantaneous speed zero that is obvious uh, when the particle is fixed at a particular position uh, its velocity instantaneous speed is zero dx by dt is equal to zero so let us uh, summarize all these results here so far uh, if x is equal to uh, k then dx by dt dx by dt is equal to uh, zero x is equal to kt uh, dx by dt dx by dt is equal to uh, k into one and uh, if x is equal to kt squared kt squared in this case uh, dx by dt is equal to constant k written as it is t square becomes 2t 2t as it is evident from the derivation and if x is equal to kt cube uh, the result is dx by dt uh, is equal to k into 3t square 3t square you can guess if it were x is equal to t raised to 4 or uh, dx by dt is equal to k into k into 4t cube and if x is equal to okay uh, we can generalize it if x is equal to if x is equal to k t raised to n then dx by dt is equal to constant k written as it is into t raised to n and t raised to n minus 1. Thus we found out the instantaneous speed that is called derivative or the finding the derivative or rate at a point is called differentiation. So we carried out the process called differentiation and we found out the rate at a point, rate at a point. And we generalize that if x is equal to uh, k t raised to n, in that case instantaneous speed is dx by dt is equal to k into constant is written as it is, t raised to n becomes n t raised to n minus 1. Thus we know the rule for uh, finding the instantaneous speed or rate at a point. Uh, some examples 
Uh, there is a very familiar expression, S is equal to ut plus half a t square. Uh, this is the position time function in uniform acceleration, S is equal to ut plus half a t square. See, u is the initial velocity, which is the velocity uh, at time t zero. u constant, a acceleration constant. Now, the only variation you observe is S is a dependent variable. Instead of x, we have S. So, we find the instantaneous speed as ds by dt is equal to a constant u written as it is into t derivative 1 plus half a is constant into derivative of t square is 2t. So, this is u plus a t, the very familiar equation for the instantaneous velocity under uniform acceleration v is equal to u plus a t. Now, take another example x is equal to uh, some constant a 0 plus a 1 t plus a 2 t square plus a 3 uh, t cube. We find the instantaneous speed dx by dt as follows a 0 constant derivative 0 a 1 into derivative of t is 1 plus a 2 constant t square 2 t plus a 3 into uh, t cube uh, der derivative is 3 uh, t square. Now take another example uh, we know uh, if momentum p is equal to mass into velocity momentum p is equal to mass into velocity so we find dp by dt the rate of change of momentum at an instant uh, is equal to, I take uh, again d by dt on the right side mv vector, uh, m is constant uh, just like k, so we have dv by dt, dv by dt. This is the instant in acceleration, so it is m into a, this is Newton's second law, f is equal to m a, x, f, f is equal to m a. Now take another example, uh, we have angular moment l is equal to i omega. I moment of inertia omega angular velocity. So dl by dt is equal to I constant I into it is d omega by dt. This is angular acceleration alpha. This is dl by dt is equal to tau. Tau is equal to I alpha. Tau is equal to I alpha. Now we will take some examples for a uniform circular motion. Uniform circular motion. This is the uh, center of the circle, radius r, and we mark uh, two points, say A and B. A and B. Uh, say this, take this point, this is the angle theta. What's the definition of uh, angle in radian? Angle in radian theta is equal to, angle in radian theta is equal to uh, arc length by radius, arc length by radius. So arc length this is equal to r theta. Differentiating again ds by dt is equal to r is constant. So we differentiate theta with respect to t. This is angular velocity omega. This is the linear speed. So we have another result v is equal to r omega. We differentiate again this. So we get uh, d, dv by dt is equal to r constant d omega, d omega by dt. This, this is angular acceleration alpha. This is the linear acceleration a. This is another relation connecting uh, circular quantities uh, and linear quantities. So from s is equal to r theta, on differentiation, we get linear velocity uh, v as r omega and angular acceleration a as uh, r alpha. Now so we see that if we have a position time function, then we can find out the instantaneous. Or in general, for any function, we can find rate at a point. Uh, here, L is the angular momentum, I moment of inertia, omega angular velocity. So differentiating, we find out uh, tau is equal to I alpha. This is Newton's second law for um, rotational motion and this is Newton's second law for linear motion.